So we've been able to work with sheet metal, but let's talk about the parameters that really drive the sheet metal and how to make them effective. So we don't have to use convert to sheet metal to have access to the sheet metal modeling environment. What we can do is on the home screen, click on new sheet metal part. This of course is on the expert license. After that, we're brought into the sheet metal modeling environment with all of our sheet metal modeling tools. And from here we can talk about uh, how we would make sheet metal from scratch, but also what kind of parameters that we should deal with. So if I open up this sheet metal clamp, there's a few parameters that we really ought to care about. And one of the biggest ones is how thick the metal actually is. To make such changes, I suggest going to the sheet metal parameters menu. And from here, we have several important parameters associated with our sheet metal. For instance, maybe I want to make this 0.7 instead of 0.8. And as you can see, the model updates live as we make that adjustment. I'll take it back to 0.8 though. We may also care about our minimum bend radii. Now, minimum and global bend radius or radii should probably not be adjusted very much on a normal day, but maybe you need a custom value. Here you can see we take whatever our thickness is and divide it by two, and that'll be our minimum and our global bend radius. Maybe I can say divide by 2.1, divide by 2.1, and okay that. And there you can see a slight change in our general radius. I can go back to sheet metal parameters though. Maybe we can see a more pronounced change if I change it to 2.5. Watch that radius right there as I click OK. And there you can see a change in the radius. So that's how we can start changing things. Of course, we can also uh, make the adjustment ourselves. We can just type in a number here, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and we can just control it with a number instead of an equation. Uh, so whatever works there. K factor is also very important. Uh, K factor can be explained by making a bend in the middle. Imagine on this bend in the middle, we are applying forces to bend it and some parts of the metal are going to be in compression. They're going to be pushing against each other to complete the bend and other parts are gonna be stretching out. And these compressions and expansions are going to create dimensional changes in our sheet metal part. So when you have some parts that are compressing and other parts that are expanding, there's going to be somewhere within that part a place where it is neither expanding nor contracting, and that is called our neutral axis. And depending on where the neutral axis falls affects how the metal changes dimensions. So when we go to bend sheet metal, we of course need to know how the dimensional changes are going to affect it so we know what dimensions to start with so that we can achieve our end goal dimensions when the metal is bent. Fortunately, a Libre handles all of this with something known as K factor. If we simply tell a Libre what the K factor of the material we're working with is, a Libre accounts for all of the dimensional changes. So here we are on a finished product and we have a K factor of 0.33. Uh, I'll go to a very extreme factor of 0.9, which probably doesn't exist in real life. But you'll notice as I apply this new K factor, nothing changes because no matter what our K factor is, this is our final bent shape with the dimensions that we want. So K factor only affects dimensions on the flat pattern. And that's why we model something bent to start off with and generate a secondary flat pattern. So let me run back to my parameters. Let me go to the flat pattern here. Now watch the overall length of this as I adjust the K factor. And I'll turn the K factor back to 0.33. When I click OK, you can see that we have a significant dimensional change. And that's to account for the different K factor of the expansions and contractions that we'll see as we bend this part. I'll pull up a new part now. This one is pretty simple with two flanges. Here I've got a flange that is pronounced from the face that it starts from. And then on this side, I have a flange that is even with the face that it should start from. And from here, we see that we have these little cutouts here. 
These cutouts are known as reliefs. Of course, when we bend sheet metal, we introduce a lot of stress and strain and deform the sheet metal into the shape that we would like to have. But those stresses are best off having been relieved. So as we bend the metal, we have a little gap here so that the stresses don't propagate like they otherwise would. Now we can adjust these. Uh, we can go to our sheet metal parameters and we can say, hey, you know what, instead of rectangular, I would like round reliefs. And you can see that our relief now develops a rounded end to it. We also can go to our parameters and say something like, you know what, I want more width. I'm just gonna say, I want it to be as wide as the thickness of my metal instead of as wide as half the thickness of my metal. And our relief becomes wider. We likewise can maybe say, our thickness times two for how deep we want them, and they'll get deeper. So we can change the dimensions of our reliefs globally just from changing this one parameters file. And we also can eliminate reliefs altogether if that is what we wish to do. Uh, it is probably less common to edit the relief values. They're pretty good as they are, but if you need to, that is how you do them, and that is how we deal with sheet metal parameters. And that's how we work with the parameters. Let's start making sheet metal from scratch in the next video.